Hello, welcome to the Crazy Hat Chemist. Today we're doing the 15th video in a series of 16. This today is on stoichiometry and gases. So here we go. Bam! Okay, gas calculation number 10. How many grams of aluminum must react with sulfuric acid to produce 1.05 liters of hydrogen gas at STP conditions? First thing that we need to do is write a balanced equation. So we got aluminum, that's a solid, and then we got sulfuric acid. Remember, it's coming from the sulfate ion, so that's H2SO4. And this is a single displacement reaction producing aluminum sulfate and hydrogen gas. So pause the video, give yourself some time, write out the equation, balance it, put the states of matter in there, and bam, this is what you should get. So hopefully that makes sense to you. Okay, since it's at STP conditions, this is a good thing because this is going to be really nice and easy for us. So we are starting off with 1.05 liters of hydrogen gas, and we want to go to what? Aluminum. So we're going to start to go from the hydrogen to the aluminum in that direction with this stoichiometry problem. So here we go. So there are two possible paths in which we can take, and I'm going to show you through, I'm going to step you wise through both of these here. The first one is using stoichiometry, and this only works because it says at STP. If it were not at STP, then we couldn't do the stoichiometry path, and we would always have to use the ideal gas equation. This one always works. There's always a little bit of stoichiometry involved in either one of these paths, but the stoichiometry method works really nice because it's under STP conditions, and hopefully there's something that you recall from STP conditions, and that is one mole of gas is equal to how many liters? That's right, 22.414 liters at STP. All right, so we're going to do stoichiometry path one, and then we're going to do the second path, number two, that's the ideal gas equation. Here we go. So, path one, where there's our balanced equation that we had before, and we're going to convert the 1.05 liters of hydrogen gas, we're going to do 22.414 liters of hydrogen, and one mole, that's because this is at STP, we're going to use the mole ratio of 3 to 2, that's 3 moles of hydrogen to 2 moles of aluminum, and then the molar mass for aluminum. And then we cancel out our units of liters, moles, and moles, and then we get grams of hydrogen, and excuse me, grams of aluminum, and here's our answer, 0.8 four three grams of aluminum. So that's path number one. That seems pretty simple and that only works at STP conditions. So we're going to try path number two. Path number two, um, we're going to have to use the ideal gas law and we're going to convert this into moles. So I plugged in there already the ideal gas constant. We're going to plug in the pressure, the volume, and the temperature. We're going to solve for the number of moles of hydrogen gas and then we're going to do a little bit of stoichiometry. So Remember, this is under STP conditions, so since it says STP, we know the standard temperature, we know the temperature, that's 273.15 Kelvin, we know the pressure, that's 100 kilopascals. We're going to have to convert, convert those kilopascal units into atmospheres, and we were given the volume, 1.05 liters, of the hydrogen gas to begin with. So we have all the parts to this to solve for moles of hydrogen, so I plugged all that in right there. Okay, hopefully those numbers make sense. Here are the significant figures in those, and it's the least number of significant figures, which is three. I did the pressure conversion right in there. I have the volume, I have the gas constant, and I have the temperature. And then this gives me moles of hydrogen gas. Now I have moles of hydrogen gas. Now I'm going to use a mole ratio to convert from hydrogen to aluminum, and then the molar mass of aluminum to convert to grams of aluminum. And that's what this is right here. And then I'm going to get my answer, and this has three significant figures. There's a little bit of a rounding error. This number is slightly different than the previous number, but that's okay. It's all okay, okay? Because the two different paths, hopefully that makes sense for you. All right, let's try another problem here, okay? Um, just as a reminder, the ideal gas equation only works with gases. It doesn't work with solids, doesn't work with liquids, doesn't work with anything in solutions. So let's try the next one. Here we go, gas calculation number 11. Iron reacts with hydrobromic acid to produce a gas and a salt with a cationic charge of 3 plus. So the first thing I want you to do is write an equation here for this. So you got iron, that's a solid, that's elemental iron, that's um, monoatomic, and then you got hydrobromic acid. So that's HBr, that's aqueous. What type of reaction is this? This is a single displacement type of reaction. So that iron is going to displace the hydrogen. You're going to get H2, and then, and then you're going to have the cationic charge of the iron be a 3 plus charge. So it's going to be um, the ferric bromide. Okay. So let's read on with the rest of the question. You're going to balance that equation. If 0.45 grams of aluminum, sorry, of iron reacts 
how many milliliters of gas is produced at 775.6 millimeters of mercury and 23.4 degrees Celsius. You should realize that this problem does not have STP conditions. So I don't have the option of using it under complete stoichiometry. So I'm gonna have to use the ideal gas equation for this one. So I do need a balanced equation first. Here's our balanced equation. Hopefully you pause the video to write that up yourself before I wrote it down there. All right, here we go. We're starting with the iron. What do we want? We want hydrogen. And then we're gonna go from the iron to the hydrogen. So that's our process. So we're gonna take our grams of, high, grams of iron and convert it into moles of hydrogen. We need to use the ideal gas equation here. So I'm gonna plug that in right here. I've rearranged it and solve for volume because I am solving for a volume of the hydrogen gas. Notice that I have little H2s all over the place. That means that it needs to be moles of hydrogen. It needs to be temperature of the hydrogen, pressure of the hydrogen, and the gas constant is already in there. So I need to get the moles of hydrogen. So that's right here. That's 0.45 grams of iron converted into moles of hydrogen using the molar mass of iron and then this, the mole ratio of iron to hydrogen. And that gets me this number right here. You should see that there's two significant figures. My answer is 1.2 times 10 negative two moles of hydrogen. That's gonna plug into the N in the ideal gas equation. I'm gonna also have to convert the temperature and the pressure in the correct set of units. So hopefully you got all this. We're gonna move on to the next slide since I need a little bit more space. Okay, good. Here we go, next slide. I got that number, the moles of hydrogen, previously, just a moment ago on the previous slide. I'm gonna get now the temperature and the pressure in the right set of units here. Here's the temperature in Kelvin, and now I'm gonna convert the pressure into atmospheres. I'm not gonna to spend too much time on that because we've done many of those already before. We're gonna plug this right into this equation right here. We're gonna look at the number of significant figures that we have, and then this is gonna be the volume of hydrogen in what are the units? Liters. So it's 0 0.29 liters. Now I'm gonna convert these liters into milliliters because the question is asking for how many milliliters of gas is produced. So here's our conversion from liters to milliliters. And then here is my final answer. That's 290 milliliters of hydrogen. That 290 has two significant figures. There's no decimal in the number. Hopefully that works for you. Fantastic. That was video number 15 of 16. Hopefully that worked for you. Rewind that video, do that video again. Stoichiometry and gases, work with that. I hope you have a good time with that. We've got one more to go and then we're done with gases. So I'll see you next time.